Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and today is uh, 14th March 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. Today, we have set our heart to solve an alternative to practical paper. We call it ATP paper. This is called. Uh, this is also called Paper Four. And today, we have selected May June 2017 four one paper. This paper, this ATP paper belongs from the variant one, or you can say it belongs from the zone one. So uh, the time allowed for this paper is one hour. So let's start today's paper. So on your screen, the question number one is showing up, May, June, 2017, for one paper. He says, a strip of paper is attached to a small toy car. As the toy car moves, it pulls the strip of paper through a timer. The timer marks a dot on the paper every 0 0.020 seconds. Figure 1.1 shows a section of the paper strip with the first four dots marked. The first of these dots to be marked on the paper is labeled A. So that's the first dot. And then this is the B dot, this is the C dot, and this is the D dot. Take the boxes that describe the motion of the car. You see, and the dots are put after every 0 0.020 second. So the time interval between the dots is same. After a certain 0 0.02 second uh, interval of time, the dots are marked on the paper. And you can see the distance between the dots in the A and B dot, the distance is larger. Between the B and the C, the distance is smaller. And between C and D, the distance is further smaller. So it means that the car is slowing down. Okay? Because when the car was moving faster, the dots will be away from each other. The distance between the dots will be larger. If the car is slowing down, then gradually the distance between the dots will decrease. So uh, I will say deceleration. So put a tick here. So let me show you. OK, so we will put a, a tick in the deceleration. And then their question is, they say, uh, sorry, I put the marking scheme. OK, then they say, explain your answer. You see, uh, between A and B and between B and C and between C and D dots, uh, the time lapse is same. The time is same, uh, 0 0.02 seconds. Uh, but the distance traveled is smaller, gradually decreasing. So from there, I know because the time lapse is same, but the distance traveled by the car is smaller. The distance between the dots is smaller, getting smaller and smaller. That means that the car is slowing down. So let me show you my written answer. It says the distance between the dots has decreased. The time lapse is same, so speed is decreasing. So let's go to the next part. He says, uh, the distance of each dot from A is D. The dot A was marked on the strip at the time T equals to one second. Take measurements from the figure 1.1 and in the space below, draw a table of results for D against T. So D is the distance of each point from A. So the distance of the A from the A will be zero. The distance of the B from A will, I will put a scale here and I will measure it. Then I will check what is the distance of the C from the A. And then I will check what is the distance of the D from the A. We have to draw a table here. So here I will draw a table of time and then the table of D, the distance from the point A. So then I will, I, I will measure the distance with the help of the scale from that given diagram. And the time, the, the time, the first time when we started observation is one second. And after 1.02 seconds, and then 1.04 second, 1.06 second, and 1.08 seconds. So like this, I will write the table. Okay. So here you can see at 1.00 seconds, the distance from the A is zero. At 1.020 seconds, the distance from the A is six centimeter. I have measured it with the help of the scale. 
and after 1.040 seconds it is 10 cm and after 1.060 seconds it is 12 cm so i hope you understand and then he says uh, the next question he says use your data to calculate the average speed of the car between t1 second and t1.0 six seconds so we have to find out the average speed distance that so average speed is you know the total distance traveled divided by the total time the total time taken from this to this point is 0 0.06 seconds and the total distance traveled is 12. so let me show you so the average uh, speed will be 12 centimeter divided by 0 0.060 seconds and the answer will be 200 centimeter per second so that is the average speed so that is question number one and it's uh, i think the last part so let me check okay so the question number one is done so let's have a look at the marking scheme the marking scheme of the question number one is showing up on your screen i have already checked my answers from the marking scheme uh, what you can do uh, you can pause the video and you can check this marking scheme A student investigates the flow of water through a hole in the bottom at a, uh, of a straight sided plastic bottle. A small circular hole is drilled in the bottom of the bottle. A scale is drawn on the side of the bottle as shown in the figure 2.1. The bottle is held in a clamp and placed above a sink. The student fills the bottle with water and removes he says, and uh, he says, the student fills the bottle with water and removes the bung at the bottom. Bung is that stopper. He, he starts his stopwatch when the water level passes one of the marks on the scale and stops it when the water level reaches point P, a point which is a few centimeters above the base of the bottle. The water level falls at a distance D. So when you will take this bung out, the water will start coming out from the bottom. And when the water level will be at 16, start the stopwatch. When the level will be at the P, stop the stopwatch. So the level of the water has dropped H in that particular time, which you have measured on the stopwatch. He says, uh, the question is very simple. He says the time for the water level uh, to fall a distance h is measured three times when h is 14 centimeter the okay so uh, when uh, the time t for the water level to fall a distance of h is measured three times when h is 14 centimeter the times measured in seconds are 35.4 second, 35.6 second, 35.3 seconds. Their question is calculate the average uh, time average. So we will add these three, these three times and we will divide it with the, the three. So we will find the sum of the three times and then I will divide them with three. So 35.4 plus 35.6 plus 35.3 equals two divided by three equals two. And that will give you 35.4 seconds. So the average time taken is 35.4 seconds. So the average time will be 35.4 seconds. Okay, so let's move to the next part. He says, uh, the experiment is repeated for a range of values of H. The results are shown in the figure 2.2. So here we have the H value, the T average value. For 14, we just calculated the T average. That was 35. Uh, on the figure 2.2, that value was 35.4, yeah. Uh, on the figure 2.2, add your value of the T average from A. And then he says, on the figure 2.3, plot a graph of T average uh, on the y-axis against H centimeter on the x-axis. 
start both axes from the origin draw a smooth curve of the best fit so basically they want you to draw this table uh, these are the x coordinate these are the y coordinates draw them on this diagram okay so let me increase the size so you can see it so this is that basically figure which they want us to draw so here i will write the h average and h i mean and here the t average okay so if i reduce the size so you can see the whole thing so that's this is that graph which we have to draw so we are talking about this a b part so uh, let me show you so here is that table so for 14 the t average was 35.4 seconds so we have to complete this table this will be our x values these will be the corresponding y values and we have to plot them so uh, you can see it's very important that i have here the h is represented and centimeters this is called labeling t average is represented here in seconds i have plotted those points you can see these dots so these dots are coming from this table at 26.5 at 4 at 6 18.4 at 8 23.1 at 10 27.1 at 10 27.1 and then at, uh, at 12, 32.1, at 12, 32.1, yeah. And at 14, 35.4. So then I will join them with the smooth curve. So I've tried to draw a smooth curve. Okay, you can see this point is left out and this point is left out. So I've tried to draw the best fit curve, curve of the best fit. So let's see what's the next question. Then he says the diameter of D of the bottle is 10 centimeters. The average flow rate R of the water is given by the equation R is equals to pi D square H. A very simple question. Pi D square H divided by 4 T average. So just put the values here. Use your answer to A to find the average flow rate for H equals to 14 centimeter. Give your answer to two significant figures. So in the place of D, I will put 10. And in the place of H, I will put 14. And at the T average, we will put 35.4. I will just enter the values and we will do this on the calculator. Very simple question. You see? So here we go. So pi bracket 10 bracket close square multiply 14 equals to divided by 4 divided by 35.4 equals to and that will be 31.1. So and that when you round it off to two significant figures, it will be 31. So. Then they say. The student increases the diameter of the hole in the bottle and repeats the experiment. On the figure 2.3, draw a possible second curve to represent the results that you expect from this larger hole. Label this line as S. So we will increase the size of the hole. So when you will increase the size of the hole, the time taken will be less. So it will be like this. So this is the graph for that second. If the hole is larger, the time taken will be less to, to drop the height. Okay. So the next question is, this one is done. And then they say, then we have the E part. He says, so just why the student did not measure the time taken for the bottle to empty completely. You see, when we did the experiment, we noted down time for the water level to fall from 16 to this point, point B, not to the bottom. Look, okay, so the reason is uh, if you try to uh, completely empty the bottle, it will take a longer time. So 
we are measured only up to the point P. It takes a long time to completely empty the bottle. So that's why we have avoided that. Okay, so that is question number two. And let me show you the marking scheme of the question number two. Okay, so the my dear students, uh, the marking scheme of the question number two is showing up on your screen. Uh, you can pause the video and you can take your time and read this marking scheme carefully. I have already checked my answers with the marking scheme. So I'm going to the next question. Okay, so the next question is question number three. Okay. He says the line A, B, and C, D as shown in the figure 3.1 represents mirrors. A student traces a ray of light that reflects off both the mirrors. So here is a mirror A, B, and here is a mirror C, D. These are the rough sides of the mirror. This is the reflecting side. This is the reflecting side. This side is the rough side of the mirror. The student places, uh, let me reduce the size so you can see. The student places two optic, uh, optic spin P1 and P2 on the ray that is incident on the mirror AB. The student places two other optic, uh, optic spin uh, P3 and P4 on the ray after reflection by the mirror CD. On the figure 3.1, using the positions of the pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, and pin 4, draw lines to show the path of the ray through the mirror. So what you will do, you will join with the help of a scale and pencil, P1, P2 uh, with a straight line until it touches the mirror, uh, mirror AB. In the same way, join the P3 and the P4 with each other with a straight line and a, with the help of a scale and a pencil until this line joins, uh, intersects the, uh, the mirror CD. So join the point of incidence on the AB and the point of incidence on the CD with each other. So this is how you will draw that. So let me show you. So here we go. You can see that I have joined the P1, P2 with each other and the straight line, uh, I prolonged it until it crosses the mirror AB. P3 and P4 have been joined with each other until they cross the, that line crosses the CD. This point of incidence and this point of incidence, I have joined them with each other. So that is the question. Okay. So the next part they are asking is, he says, describe the steps that you took to draw these lines. Okay. So I have already told you that those steps, you see what we did, we joined the P1, we joined, we, it's a two mark question. Join P1, P2 with the help of a, of a pencil and a scale until uh, you touch the, the line, touch the AB uh, mirror. Same way, join the P4 and the P3 with each other with the help of the pencil and a scale until that line and touches the CD mirror. And join the point of incidence on the AB mirror and the CD mirror with each other. So this is how you will, I have done that thing. So state a precaution that you took to ensure that all the lines are drawn accurately. We use a sharp pencil and we always draw the line through, through these dots, okay? Let me show you my... Okay, join pin one and pin two with a straight line to AB, join pin uh, four and pin three with a straight line to the CDCD. CD to the line, uh, to straight line to CD, join the point of incident on both the mirrors with each other. So this is how you have got this diagram. You see, join them till here, join them with here, then join this point and this point with each other. So this is what we have done. The state of precaution that you took to ensure that the lines are drawn accurately, uh, lines should be drawn with a sharp pencil, line should pass through through the dots, okay? So that was question number three, A part, and it's first, second, second and third part. Then he says, uh, they ray meet middle A, B at the Q on the figure 3.1, label the point Q, draw the normal at the Q, measure the angle of incidence, I at the Q, 
and measure the angle of reflection R at the Q. So let me show you. So what we have done here, we have drawn a normal at the point of Q, a point Q, and then we have measured how much is the angle of incidence, and then we have measured how much is the angle of reflection. Okay. So then I will measure the angle of incidence that will be 45. I have measured it's approximately 45 and I have measured the angle of reflect, reflection that is approximately 46. Okay. Now, then they say explain how the student could improve the position of P3 and P4 to achieve a more accurate values of what the angle R. You see the distance between the P3 and P4 should be more than five centimeter and we always may when we align the pins we always align the pins from the bottom not from the head remember these things okay so distance between the p3 and p4 should be more than five centimeters so that was the question number three let me show you the marking scheme Question number three is coming up on the, uh, the marking scheme of the question number three is showing up on your screen. So I have already checked my answers with the marking scheme. Uh, you can pause the video and you can check your answer. It's a very, very important habit to always check the answers of your teacher, your mentor, your own answers uh, with the marking scheme. Compare them with the marking scheme. So have a look, good look at this marking scheme and take your time. I'm going to the next question. Okay. A student determines the resistance R of a resistor. Figure 4.1 shows circuit used. So here we have put a um, meter one and here we have put a meter two. He uses two meters in the boxes above, write the names of the meters. So this meter, which is connected in series, uh, that is an ammeter, it can measure current. And this meter, which is connected parallel to the resistor, this is called voltmeter, and it measures the voltage difference. So state the quantities that are measured by these meters. Meter one measures the current, and the meter two measures the voltage drop or voltage difference or potential difference. She says the figure 4.2 shows the readings on the ammeter. Uh, so what's this reading? So if you want to know what is this reading, I can show you. So this reading is basically 0 0.24 and it measures current, so it's ampere. 0 0.24 ampere and this is 7.2 uh, volt. So we write these values here. So ammeter and voltmeter, current and voltage drop. The readings are 0 0.24 and ampere, and the other reading is 7.2 volt. Okay, so now the next question. He says, use your readings uh, to find the value of the resistance R using the equation. So R is equals to V by I. So this is I value and this is the voltage value. So we can just put the values here and we can calculate the R value. So the V is 7.2 and the I is 0 0.24 ampere. So 7.2 divided by 0 0.24, it gives you 30 ohm. So the resistance is 30 ohm. Then he says, Describe a precaution the student should take to ensure that the value of the R is accurate. You see, whenever you switch on the circuit, immediately note down what is what are the readings on the ammeter and the voltmeter. Just note them and switch off the circuit. This will prevent the circuit from uh, overheating. And you know, when it will overheat, the resistance and the current value will change. Okay. So my dear students, uh, today we are done uh, with the May, June 2017, Physics 5054-41 paper. This is an alternative to practical ATP paper four, and this paper belongs from the zone uh, one. I have tried my best to explain you the concepts which were involved. I hope that this video will be helpful to you. If you find this video uh, interesting and informative and helping, and it has, 
it has made your life easier to do the ATP paper, please share the link of this video onto your Instagram accounts, onto your Facebook, and onto your uh, Twitter accounts. That will help me to promote uh, this channel. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Suggest the channel to all your friends, especially your juniors, so that when they are in, in the higher classes, like nine Cambridge, 10 Cambridge, they know from where to practice the past papers. So thank you very much, everybody. It's a great blessing for me to teach you online. The comments which the students are sending me on the YouTube, they are very encouraging for me. Uh, normally, I'm not replying those, but I, 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 some, I, I read them and they are very encouraging for me. So thank you very much. Keep watching my videos and keep learning. Thank you very much. Have a good day and God bless you.